Would you like to say hi? Just introduce yourself. <laughs> hi, I'm Tom Alexander, the owner of Kimberly, and uh, this is Kimberly. So this is this is how we produce vinegar, and this is where we do it. Um, kind of a brief history of Kimberly is it was started in about 1968 by a couple named Larry and Ruth uh, Robinson in Daly City, and uh, Larry was a math teacher in San Francisco, and he uh, he was also a hobby winemaker. So when you ask the question about is winemaking, you know, kind of related, yes it is. And he was a, he was a home winemaker that uh, liked to make a lot of wine, like two, three hundred gallons a year. And it wasn't that he wasn't a very good winemaker, it's just that uh, vinegar has a, a aerobic bacteria, it's called acetobacter mycelium. And what that bacteria does is it feeds on alcohol and it, and its byproduct is acetic acid. So you have to start with wine and or alcohol to get to vinegar. So it wasn't he was a bad winemaker, it was just that he, everything he had had this bacteria on it. And uh, this specific bacteria is uh, very vigorous and it's healthy. And uh, it's probably, if you could track it back to, you know, early civilization, let's say the Romans and the Greeks and the Mesopotamians, uh, you know, I think they stumbled onto winemaking probably by accident. Because it, it makes sense that if you pick the best fruit out of your garden, you eat it, whatever's left over, you put it in a, in a jar or a vessel or something, you know, a pot, and then eventually if it has sugar, it'll ferment, it'll make wine. So they probably stumbled onto winemaking and then at some point in time down the roads, four, five, six months, this bacteria, which is part of a fermentation process, would eventually get you vinegar. Makes sense. So, and it also makes sense that the higher the alcohol, that the, more, the higher the acetic acid. So if you get a fruit that has, let's say, 23 to 25, 26% sugar, you'll get alcohol in the 12 to 14 percent range, like in wine. And so that equates to a vinegar in the 10 to 12 percent range. Um, and 10 percent means is equivalent to grams per liter. So that kind of gives you an idea that if you had, you know, a 375 ml bottle, 37 mils of that, if you could distill it out, would be acid. And the acid that's in vinegar is called acetic acid. And in the family of, of acids, acetic acid is the weakest. So um, a typical acid in the family of, of wines would be tartaric, citric, and malic. And uh, I don't know, you guys drink much wine at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you were to put a bottle of wine in the refrigerator for a long time, in the bottom of the bottle you may get this real gritty, sandy looking stuff. That's acid. That's the acid in the wine. That's tartaric acid tartaric that acid. precipitates? Yeah, yeah, it could be tartaric or malic or mm. possibly some little bit of citric. And um, whereas the acid, acetic acid and vinegar, if you were to put vinegar in the refrigerator, you'll get this real fine film that will form on the bottom and that's acetic acid. And it's really, it's really powdery and it's real soft. So it doesn't bind well. Chemically, structurally and chemically, it's not a strong acid. But it is, it is uh, so therefore it releases into your taste buds and across your palate quickly. And so that's why you really pick it up fast. Um, so could you make vinegar from a higher alcohol content? Like if, uh, from straight distilled alcohol? Yes. You could make vinegar from that. Y yes, I didn't you can. Know that. Um, the trick is to, uh, in other words, the higher the acid, the more it's going to kill the bacteria, or the, uh, excuse me, the higher the alcohol, yeah. the more it will kill the bacteria. So the trick is to introduce the bacteria on the surface where you have evaporation and the alcohol is the least. It will take longer, but yes, you could, it will, it will do that. And there are some uh, types of sherries and Madeiras that are produced in Portugal that are high alcohol products that they do make these um, acetic type after dinner liqueurs out of that I you know I've tasted once or twice but it, but it takes a long period of time it's like balsamic um, balsamic is, is kind of the same theory where you have a super super sweet uh, 
juice, grape juice, and then it takes a really long period of time to actually go through a little fermentation where it produces alcohol, and then the bacteria converts that alcohol to acetic acid. And that's kind of a true balsamic takes 20, 30, 40 years to really make it well. Do you, do you ever change the barrels like they do in balsamic vinegar? Um, or? Our balsamic, I moved the operation from San Francisco in 95 here. Mm. And we did start balsamic then. So what is that? That's about uh, 13 years. I've got some balsamic and it's not ready yet. It's, oh. it's still <laughs> young as far as balsamic goes. Um, so what you see as far as um, the barrels, so we take fresh wine, we make, it's all organic, everything in here is organic. Uh, we take, or we it's make our sharp. own wine because we are a winery. We bring the organic wine over and we just take a small percentage of, of living, working vinegar uh, bacteria. What you might see if you read about in food magazines, you'll hear the word uh, mother, you know, they use the word mother. Um, mother is just a gentle way of saying bacteria. People don't like, you know, people don't like to read your drinking bacteria, but it's a friendly bacteria. Uh, for a long, long time, um, I'm talking, you know, the last course of a thousand years or so, if um, a, a basic cough syrup hundreds of years ago was honey and vinegar, um, that was used for a long, long time. Uh, once you get the acid up above 10%, it's actually um, sterile. So most things can't live in that high acid range. So they used to use uh, vinegar for st sterilizing things like surgical instruments. You can mm -hmm. use them to pickle. You can put vegetables in there, you can pickle with it. Uh, you can put meats in there and you can preserve it because of the acid. Um, there's lots of little tricks they used to take uh, for bug bites. You know, I mean, back then, bugs, everybody's getting bugs a little vinegar on the bug bite and it will sterilize it and it'll go away. Um, so there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. Um, this, um, this vinegar is kind of unique. Uh, like I said, Larry back in 1968 was making bad wine that would go over to vinegar and the thing was he was, he was actually propagating this healthy, strong bacteria that has survived. And you know, like I said, acetic acid is weak. So basically the bacteria that makes acetic acid, uh, acetobacter mycelium, you have to have a pretty strong strain of it to last this long and to mm -hmm. generate this much vinegar. So I'll show you. I want to show you what it looks like to see this healthy living organism inside of these barrels. You're going to see this. And um, there's plenty of other vinegar manufacturers out there, but not too many of them have this uh, a real strong vivacious bacteria that just loves, you know, we call her, uh, we, we name her, just call, you know, kind of abbreviation yeah. is ABI, so we call her Abby. And, and Abby is like, she's real healthy and active and she loves young wine. You know, so is her. it like a, like a raft that you find floating, because I make vinegar at home and it just has this sort of snotty raft that floats on top of it that um, I can put into wine and it'll t turn it to vinegar easily. It, it depends uh, if that's, if it's, if it's a powdery substance, if it looks dry? It's, no, it's like gummy, you know. Gummy, okay. So we call that, uh, that's what we call a liver, a liver type material. And it's, um, it's, that's basically, that's a little bit of an infection. And what happens is, is that all this stuff coagulates together and that is, it is inoculated with the bacteria, but that's kind of a host for the bacteria and it's something hmm. that we try to keep out. And what, how you develop that is if you were to have a barrel and use the same barrel years for years and years and years, eventually all these dead bacteria cells start to gather and it's a real slimy type viscous stuff. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that it takes up space in your barrel. Yeah. So in a commercial operation, we, don't, we try to get rid of that. Do, do you then pasteurize this before you bottle it? Or no. no. So it's living. No. Cool. no. Um, the barrels, come on, I'll show you guys what this stuff is. Inside these barrels, you'll see that Let me get, just get a shot Louis Pasteur, you know, claimed that he designed this method, and the, and the method is called an Orleans method, where you see the you see these vent holes. So Louis Pasteur said that uh, this is the optimum uh, surface area, airspace to liquid, 
And, it, and these are basically ventilation holes because it's an, it's an aerobic bacteria. It needs oxygen to feed. So um, I don't know whether that's true or not. You so know? the level is below those? Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. We start with the level right here. Huh. And uh, the French kind of claim everything, but I don't know if it's really, <laughs> if it's really true or not. But we've taken wine, and we'll put wine in some of these tanks and have a small residual amount of, of vinegar left. And um, if it sits in there for six or eight years, it'll start to turn in a big tank, just like it will here. But in here, we have the oak surface. That, the bear, that is a benefit to the vinegar. It'll pick up some of that oak flavor. It's a little bit more of a gentle process in here, and um, we kind of keep it isolated. Each barrel, um, you know, kind of works at its own speed, and it's it's really it's kind of unique. If you guys, if you want to be the first candidate here to look at this, okay. Now, if you look, there's a liquid line in there. And if you look on the liquid line, I got my glass in there as well. If you look real closely, just barely above the liquid line, you see a little activity in there. It's kind of like if you were to pour a soda in a glass and you see that little spritzing and jumping around. You see it? It looks real still. No? Well, right on the top of the liquid line, you see where that little wet spot is? Just above the liquid. Just isolate right there on that wet spot. Do you see a little activity? No? Okay. <laughs> we'll get the next one. Let's see.